now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the last The government Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about why the Bitcoin ETFs may be approved as soon as next week. There are all kinds of early warning signs on the markets right now that we may be seeing an approval much sooner than later. And today, we're going to be able to talk about what the chart looks like, and we're going to talk about where the chart may go. And I also want to make sure that we are all on the same page about how we can prepare ourselves with our investments right now before the Bitcoin bull, uh, bull market and bull run really kicks into full swing. Very excited to be here today, guys. As always, love it when we get to do Climate of uh, uh, Coffee and Crypto here. Love coming here and interacting with all of you guys. <clears throat> I do want to apologize a little bit early on. I am running about 100 degree fever right now. I am quite sick and my wife is very sick as well. So... We're just a sickly family at the very moment, but we are here, and I'm not going to miss the stream just because of a little fever and of a gigantic headache. Golly, I, can, I you guys will have to tell me what you, how you feel about this, but I cannot stand headaches. They they just suck. I used to have, mm, starting our stream right with some coffee, I used to have the worst migraines. I wouldn't be able to do anything other than just lay down and go to sleep, and now, you know, business, wife, two kids whole lot like you can't really do that you kind of just have to power through so it sucks but we're here and i'm really excited to be here today because today is friday and that means today is hashtag fence off friday let's see it in chat if you guys don't know financial sovereignty is the philosophy that we run everything by here at the crypto jeb youtube channel and that is the philosophy of being in total complete control and wise and faithful stewardship of our time our money and our possessions most importantly our money because the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It does not say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. And if it is controlling you, then that's not where you want to be. You can be a slave to your money or you can use it as a tool to grow your career, your life, your ministry, whatever you want it to be. Very exciting call today at two, by the way. Not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to drop a hint that, boom, it's going to be an interesting one. Chris Moe's in chat. Crypto Mini Bikes in chat. Christina Orozco's in chat. Queen, Joey Van Englenberg. Love these names. Joe Bollier, Sam, Philly Skills, Passive Income with AI, Steven Alexander, Rocket Metal News, B. Cisco, Mattis S, Satchet321, RJ, Among the Crowd, 1977, Alex, Psychedelic Sunshine said, Good morning, future millionaires. Love to see it. Eli R's in chat, Dank Productions, Eddie, Diego, The French Toast Breakfast Club, Nitin Sago, Mean Beam Okerlund said, Give the video a like to support the channel. Thank you so much. Victor Sleeps, Darmendra Patel, good to see you from London. Crypto Mini Bikes in chat. <clears throat> what color is your shirt? Merlot? I'm going to go with the Merlot color. That's right. Nothing but crypto. Knut Jansen, uh, Ryan is in chat. Diego, Fury Inferno, Sweet Benna Sweet Bear is in chat. Feedox, Dax Broody, Eli R, Yo Boy 91, Volvo Disco. That's a cool name. And Mario Cat um, Catins uh, Cat hmm. Catanesi. I'm gonna say Catanesi. I think that's it. And Jerome. Shout out to Jerome, a member. All right. I do have one more announcement coming up towards the end of January. I will be coming to a North Carolina near you because my family and I are going to be going on vacation for about nine or ten days. We decided on how we're going to do the content, though. We're going to be gone for that week, <clears throat> for a week. But I'm going to pre-record content. For all five days and every morning, I'm going to shoot myself, uh, shoot for you guys a phone video. So we won't be doing Coffee and Crypto that week, but we will be doing a phone video 
on top of a pre-recorded video. So you'll actually be getting two videos all five days that I'll be gone. And some of those videos obviously will be shot on location. And we are going to a very, 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 very beautiful lake. Oh my goodness. I'll give you a hint. There was a certain movie to do with dancing shot here. Let's see if anybody knows where we're going. All right. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. <clears throat> You got to stay with me. Dive right on into it. All right. Bitcoin right now is trading at $43,800. It is currently sitting at an $858 billion market cap. Ethereum sitting at $2,242. And I just want to get something out of the way really quick. These are probably the last times that you are ever going to see these numbers. This is probably one of the last times you're ever going to see these numbers. One of the last times you're ever going to see these prices. These prices <clears throat> may be revisited from time to time, but they are likely going to be history real, real fast. Binance right now is trading at 31, uh, 315. Solana at 98. Sub $100 Solana is going to take some time. Uh, excuse me. Sub $100 Solana is going to start looking like a really good deal before long. Solana is a play. Solana is a play that I think could easily six to 7x. I could see Solana going to $300 billion during the bull market. You might think I'm crazy for that, but there's a lot of build out going on on Solana right now. XRP, phenomenal pick. I think it's going to do very well in the bull market. Cardano, down 13.31% in the last seven days. I love it. I'm going to eat these drops for breakfast as soon as this stream is over and we do our weekly dollar cost averaging. Cannot wait to go and buy some of these projects. Cannot wait to get Cardano at 53 cents. Cannot wait to get some Solana at $98. Cannot wait to get some Polygon at 84 cents. Chainlink at $14. Internet computer, moonshotting. Not really that excited about getting it when it's up 36%, but I'm still gonna be getting some because this project's going places, guys. Internet computer, I think, will be worth $50 billion in the bull market. There, I said it. That's an 8X, 8, 9X. Have yourself some fun with that. <clears throat> Litecoin down 15%. Going to be picking up some of that as well. I originally was not going to dollar cost average into Litecoin, but I actually am going to now because I've looked at the chart. And you know what? Litecoin has that OG original altcoin status. And so, you know what? I think I will pick some of this. If it gets to $400, I'm selling all of it. I'm not holding Litecoin for the long term. I don't think it's a project that has a ton of backing, a, a ton of um, a ton of um, fundamentals I'm very excited about, but I am. I do think that it could go on at least a 5X. So that's where, that's kind of my baseline right now. I want to find projects that are going to at least 5X from where we are right now. I believe that Bitcoin and Ethereum fall into that category. I believe the vast majority of the top, um, top 40 or 50 fall into that category pretty realistically. Many of them probably more than 10X from here. Um, I'm also looking into getting into some caspa i need to finally go ahead and get some caspa it's doing very well it's down to 11 cents pretty excited about that it obviously has had a bit of a rally in the last couple of days but uh very excited about caspa uh all-time high sitting up here right around 15 cents it's down at 11 right now pretty solid pullback i'm really excited to be getting into that all right so let's go ahead and jump straight on into some bitcoin technical analysis because we need to look at these charts this is probably going to be one of the last streams that we see where bitcoin is in this range because i am pretty confident for a multitude of reasons that we are going to see the crypto etfs specifically the bitcoin etfs showing up next week why well some of the final deadlines for public comment are coming up on many of the bitcoin etfs this week normally the sec would allow that time for comment to run its course before they'd send out an approval or a denial there's several other things that i want to mention here in just a minute that you may have heard about in the news kind of want to give some background on those um different updates and then we'll talk about those but in short <clears throat> i do believe that we're going to see an approval at some point early next week the arc the arc 21 shares um etf is uh, its deadline is the 10th which is the wednesday i do believe my guys my dudes i do think that wednesday is the deadline for that now let's look at the chart here because this is very likely about to be history bitcoin has been above this uptrending this um we don't know what color this uptrending level of support for quite some time. Oh, goodness gracious. What in the world just happened? You can see all my, oh man, you just saw that I need to bring some sovereignty to my desktop. How about that? How about that right there? I told you guys I'm not perfect. Did you see that? There wasn't anything compromising on there, but did you see that? Oh man. Oh, shoot, man. I really need to organize that desktop, don't I? Mm. Crypto Jeb exposed. He talks about being financially sovereign and then look at his his file structure. I just saw it over here on the screen. Oh, man, you guys are going to give me hell for that in chat. I know it. 
really excited to get that cleaned up. That's a 2024 goal right there. New Year's resolution, have an actual functional file structure. You have no idea how hard it is to keep track of files while you're working on YouTube. Anyway, let's keep going here. The point is this trend line right here, whatever color it may be, is a very important trend line for Bitcoin because this trend line <clears throat> has been pointing towards the end of year price prediction for 2023. We predicted last year in March that Bitcoin would end the year right here. We drew this chart in March of last year. That's exactly where Bitcoin concluded the year. And from here, though, this uptrending level of support, uh, this uptrending level of support right here is pointing much, much, much higher. And if we do extrapolate it out, by August, it's pointing to like $80,000. I do believe that Bitcoin is going to be able to ride this uptrend, and I could see us coming back down and backtesting this uptrending level of support as well. <laughs> nah, Jeb got LifeLock CEO'd. I really hope there wasn't anything compromising on there. Hopefully, I don't think there was. I don't think there was. Just a bunch of screenshots of different stuff that goes in thumbnails. You guys see that anyway. Anywho, this uptrending level of support is very important because Bitcoin is going to continue to go through major uptrends after the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF and the other ETFs get approved. And part of the reason that I say that that's probably going to happen is because of the gold ETF. I was just talking about this yesterday with someone. And if you look at the history of the gold ETF, you're going to see that after the gold ETF came online, we saw a massive massive bull market. And I want to draw some comparisons here between the gold ETF and between the uh, and between the Bitcoin ETF that's likely about to be upcoming. This ETF, this exchange traded fund on gold, GLD in particular, launched at the very end of 20, uh, 2004. It rallied 124% in 1200 days up until the housing market crash in 08. And from there, if you'll remember, I remember this from when I was a, you know, a wee little kid in preteen, all the gold, all the gold commercials. Who remembers that? Who remembers all the gold commercials of this is our finest gold silver? This is our finest gold and silver. Look, it has this Native American man on here that's that's very important in history. Look at this. This is this has a picture of a bison on it. Like, come buy our gold. Who remembers those ads? Tell me, tell me somebody also remembers those ads. Most of you guys were old enough to be adults back then. I wasn't. I was 10. I was just trying to watch I was just trying to watch Animal Planet. I was just trying to watch Meerkat Manor. And this guy. This older gentleman with gray hair would keep coming on during the ad break, and he would tell me about these little gold coins with a bison on them. <laughs> Who remembers that? The reason that he was doing that is because gold was on a complete tear. Gold went over $2,000 an ounce, went up to $185, never really recaptured that. Ya boy 91 knows what I'm talking about. You guys remember those ads. I know you do. I know you do. Right now, gold's going into all-time high territory. But my point here is that after this massive run, uh, excuse me, after the ETF was approved for GLD, we saw <laughs> those still come on in nursing homes. <laughs> Oh, I knew I'd strike a chord with that. After we had that ETF come online, gold went on a seven-year run. Seven-year run. Now, we do need to make one distinction. That is obviously the distinction that gold has been around for thousands of years. Bitcoin turned 15 two days ago. I mean, Bitcoin right now is in the process of studying on FLVS for its learner's permit. Like, I understand Bitcoin's a slightly younger a slightly younger asset, but I do believe that something very similar may happen to Bitcoin. And kind of the conversation I want to unpack here today is one of how the Bitcoin ETF may be approved next week, but also how that may impact Bitcoin when that ETF is actually approved. Many people are wondering, are we about to see the end of the four-year cycle. Are we about to see the end of the four-year cycle where Bitcoin doesn't go through massive bear markets, massive crashes anymore? And to answer that, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about why I think the ETF is going to be approved next week. And I also want to talk a little bit about how Bitcoin will go about um, its market and how the cryptocurrency market will look over the next five years. And the reason that I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say is because I know many of you guys are investing with thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's very important from a technical analysis and a fundamental analysis lens in that order of significance that we understand what's going to happen in the next several years so that we can plan accordingly. We want to make sure that our plans are set up to succeed. And the Bible says in the multitude of counsels, plans fail. But for lack of counsels, excuse me, in the multitude of counsels, plans succeed. But for the lack of counsels, plans fail. So I don't want to be your only counsel. There are plenty of other very intelligent colleagues of mine on YouTube that have other opinions as well. So seek plenty of counsel. But this is what I wanted to talk about, about where I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is going to go and how we're going to get there. But first, we have to talk about the approval. Love coffee. 
Bitcoin ETFs are coming fast. Crypto investing will never be the same, <clears throat> says an article out of investors.com. And I do believe that that is true. The window for the SEC to approve ET applications, ETF applications opens on Friday, January the 5th through January the 10th. Bloomberg analyst James Seifert reported on December 1st via X. Those dates correspond to deadlines for an application filed by Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, according to Forbes. Seifert expects approvals between January 8th and January 10th. He sees a 10% chance or less that the SEC will decline to approve filings by January 10th. The SEC could, te could technically issue approval orders on at least nine applications before the window. This is very significant because for many reasons, next week is looking like it's going to be the week that we will actually see approvals. Again, the period for commenting on multiple of these different um, <clears throat> on multiple of the different applications for public comment is coming to a close uh, today. Um, and normally the SEC is going to wait until after that is closed so that everybody who wants to speak their piece can speak their piece. But there are also many other things being filed. The 8A forms are being filed with the exchanges. This is a very important form that has to be filed before a Bitcoin ETF can actually be approved. And asset managers, including Grayscale, I'll show you right here, including ARK, Grayscale, and Fidelity are filing Form 8A in the latest sign of progress for spot Bitcoin ETF applications. Now, the reason that this is significant is because this is a form that must be signed before the ETFs can trade on exchange. It does not mean that we are seeing a guaranteed approval. But what it does mean is that you have to have some degree of confidence to go about signing these forms and putting them in place for the actual uh, approval process. You would not be going about the process of putting uh, of signing these forms and submitting them to the SEC if you did not believe that we were going to see an approval. Again, that's Grayscale, ARK, and Fidelity. Vanek is also one of the, uh, and Valkyrie, many of the different major corporations and companies that are filing for ETFs and the exchanges that they'll be trading on, they are working on the forms that need to be done. You've also got the Form 19-4Bs that are coming out. And at the same time, we have a couple of other pieces of news. First and foremost, we have the chief, uh, I believe it's the chief investment officer at Grayscale, tweeted earlier, and it just went absolutely crazy. Tweeted, just filling out some forms. And many people are speculating that what he was talking about was that he was f filling out the forms that are going to be necessary for the actual approval of the Grayscale ETF. Many people are eyeing the BlackRock and the Grayscale ETF specifically, uh, especially ever since Grayscale won their court case in that landmark case that we saw come to a close in late quarter three of last year. And there's also one more thing I want to mention here, and I'll pull up an article for it. I had an article for this. Let me see if I can find this. Yes, uh, CoinDesk actually has an article on this. Goldman Sachs is eyeing the Bitcoin ETF role via the BlackRock and via BlackRock and Grayscale. So Goldman is looking at playing the role of an authorized participant. An authorized participant is somebody <clears throat> that has been approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission to work in these ETFs. And this is very significant because traditionally a massive bank, a Wall Street investment bank like Goldman Sachs is not able to interact with the cryptocurrency market in the same way they would be able to interact if an ETF gets approved. Now, first and foremost, that means that these massive banks can get involved in Bitcoin, which is a double-edged sword. It probably brings about tens of billions of dollars of investment, but it also, of course, means that there are uh, now investment banks that are working in crypto, and that brings with it plenty of nonsense. But it's not just Goldman Sachs that could be acting as a as a um, as authorized participants in these exchanges. We're also looking at J.P. Morgan Chase, Jane Street, Cantor Fitzgerald, and many other major companies being AP uh, do, um, being APs for these ETFs. And essentially, these are authorized participants that would work with the ETF to ensure liquidity and to make sure that the fund actually that the ETF, the exchange traded fund, actually gets a solid start. And they would also, of course, have the ability to buy the fund. Big banks who have traditionally avoided dealing with cryptocurrency directly have been invited to join and hotly anticipate the hotly anticipated Bitcoin ETF party thanks to the adoption of a cash based mechanism for handling the Bitcoin backing the shares, which is seen as a necessary part for winning SEC's approval. We talked about this a while ago. We've seen that SEC was very, very significant that we had to see uh, that we had to see. Um, a cash redemption model rather than an in-kind redemption model that has been ironed out that's now what we're going for with the grayscale and the blackrock etfs and all of the others um, and that does mean that these big banks can get involved with it because otherwise they wouldn't really be able to the firms goldman sachs is seeking to partner with are major players blackrock is the biggest asset manager in the world while grayscale runs a 26 billion dollar grayscale bitcoin trust the biggest bitcoin investment vehicle the grayscale product is structured as a trust though the company wants to convert it to an easier to trade etf so this is another big step you're seeing blackrock I'm sorry, not BlackRock. You're seeing Goldman. You're seeing JP Morgan Chase, Jane Street, 
uh, Cantor Fitzgerald, and many of these other massive investment banks, massive, massive, massive companies getting into Bitcoin through becoming authorized participants in the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. When I read a lot of this last night, I could not sleep last night. I'm going to be honest. It took me three and a half hours to fall asleep last night. I think part of it was because I'm sick, but part of it also was because I was so excited about what's happening with the channel and where we're going. Like I literally, I, I could, I'll be honest, I couldn't stop thinking of this chart right here. I just had to show you. Channel's been absolutely blowing up over the last couple of weeks. Very excited about that. Could not stop thinking about what we're going to do, where we're going to go, the people we're going to help. And one of the things I couldn't stop thinking about was the fact that when I got into cryptocurrency, you want to know what the what the whole thing was? Oh, look, a big names in crypto. I remember in 2017 when Bitcoin was rallying up to twenty uh, uh, twenty thousand dollars the first time. By the way, this is going to be the third bull market that I participated in in Bitcoin and worked in and traded in and invested in. When Bitcoin was originally running up to the twenty count twenty k all time high, you want to know? what the big names were they were getting into Bitcoin, they were talking about it, and they weren't even getting into it. They just mentioned it because it was trendy. Dude Perfect and Ellen DeGeneres. Dude Perfect and Ellen DeGeneres. That was the big names. Now, don't get me wrong. Those are big names. But they're not J.P. Morgan Chase. They're not Goldman. They're not BlackRock. They're not Larry Fink. They're not the Securities and Exchange Commission, this being the biggest issue on their list. They're not the nation of El Salvador. OK, we've had an insane amount of adoption in the nearly seven years that I've been here in about a year and a half. I will have been here for half of the entire history of Bitcoin. And I've watched things change and it almost brought me to tears last night. I was like, man, look, I understand bringing in BlackRock and Goldman and JP Morgan and all these different names does bring with it a certain set of challenges because Bitcoin and crypto need to be able to hold on to their identity of financial sovereignty of us being in control of our money and our money not controlling us. We've got to hold on to our principles. We cannot let that change. Luckily, the majority of it is hard coded into the Bitcoin um, into the Bitcoin uh, code, you know, for forgive the repetition, but that's the word for it. Um, but we shan't forget that even if these big banks are getting into it. But it's insane that we have that kind of adoption going on. I never, you know, when I first got into crypto seven, almost seven years ago, six years ago, six and a half years ago, it was November of 2017. So what that, what's that, uh, six years, three months ago or so? I remember people were wondering, what are you doing getting into Bitcoin? And I remember telling people, I was 17 years old. I had just turned 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. Now I was going to start the YouTube channel in a couple of weeks from this conversation I was having with people. I said, I am going to get into crypto early because I know in a decade it's going to be huge and I'm going to figure out how crypto works and I am going to be in a place that when the masses show up because I know I'm early when the masses show up I will have been here for years and I will be able to teach them that was a specific I can tell you the exact place I could drop a pin on Google Maps I was outside of P building at Santa Fe College in Gainesville Florida I remember exactly where I was I remember exactly where I was when I said that, I don't remember who I was talking to, but I remember exactly where I was. There used to be an oak tree there. They cut it down. Now it's a gravel lot. It's really sad. I love that tree. But that's exactly where I was when I said that. I will never forget saying that. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I knew that they meant something. And here we are seven years later. We've got Goldman, JP Morgan, Chase, BlackRock getting in. So for many of these reasons that I've talked about, we believe that an ETF approval will be coming next week. Now, Many of those reasons also, as far as the timing is concerned, some of the reasons that we're looking at that exact timing has to do with the deadline of the ARK investment ETF. Which, if I understand correctly, is January the 10th, which is next Wednesday. The key date to watch, however, is January 10th, which the deadline that the SEC set to determine whether to approve a Bitcoin ETF application filed by ARK Investment Management and Swiss Crypto Manager 21 shares. If that application is approved, it's likely that others will be too. So come January 10, we're going to find out whether ARC gets their approval. If they get a denial, it doesn't mean that all of them are denied. It's very possible that they will all, that, that many of the others will be approved. But ARC is probably going to get an approval. Kathy Wood's probably going to be worth $100 billion in a few years because of it. And we're going to see a massive run on Bitcoin. This is next week. All right, so we got 15 minutes left. I want to talk a little bit, now that we've talked about the long term, We've talked a little bit about, excuse me, we've talked a little bit about why I believe an ETF approval is coming next week. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what the next three to five years may look like on Bitcoin because of that. And then I want to talk about how we can prepare for it. That's kind of the, the outline that I have work that I'm working with right now. 
the next three to five years on Bitcoin, if the ETF is approved, are going to be some of the most bullish years that you have ever witnessed on Bitcoin. And the reason for that is because when an ETF gets approved, it institutionalizes an investment in a way that nothing else can. When the ETF for gold was created, gold went on the largest run than it had ever gone on. Now, if we look at the gold value per ounce, I do believe this chart will go back before the ETF. So we'll have some context here. Can I tell you the time? Can you tell by this chart when the gold ETF, the first gold ETF was approved? This chart really goes back to 1970 and starts to kind of break down from there because we didn't really have the same kind of trading activity that we do now that we did going into the 70s with the compute with uh, with Internet. Where do you think? And it was also gold standard. So this is actually right after the gold standard. Where do you think the gold ETF was approved? Why do you think the gold ETF was approved? It was approved. And if I recall my history correctly, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was approved in November of 04, right there. Gold was already on a run. It was already doing well. Kind of similar to Bitcoin. There were exchanges for it, but it wasn't publicly available on brokerages the same way that it could have been. Switch to the correct chart. And from there, gold would go on a massive run per ounce of 344%. It would rally all the way from $400 an ounce to $2,000 per ounce. And right now, of course, people are pretty excited about gold because gold is in this just huge triangle pattern that looks like it's going to break bullish. It's been building for the last five years. Um, you got these uptrends right here. A lot of things are playing out on gold that, could, that are pretty exciting for all the gold bugs out there. But nevertheless, the point is the ETF. When that ETF got approved, gold nearly 5 x and that's gold. Gold has been around and been reaching for price stability for 6,000 years. And keep in mind, the inflation rate of gold. Let me pull up an actual number here just so I can prove it. The inflation rate of gold varies, but generally, it's quite high. This is the, well, okay, so this data is not what I'm looking for. Generally speaking, it averages out around 2%. I'm not going to be able to find a source for you very quickly on that. But generally, it average out, averages out around 2% as far as the amount of supply in the world. It averages out a, a little over 2%. So you're actually not really saving much money on gold compared to inflation. Bitcoin, on the other hand, doesn't do that. And all the gold bugs are, how shall I say this? I want to say this as politely as I can because I don't intend to offend anyone or hurt anybody's feelings. But many of the people that are gold bugs are getting older. And so many of them are retired, which means they're on fixed incomes, which means they don't have the same kind of investment capital that they once did. Bitcoin's been around for 15 years. And many people like myself grown up with it. I grew up with Bitcoin. I got into Bitcoin when I was 16 years old. I'm now 23 years old. I have a family, a wife, and two kids. And so I am I'm at the like the I'm in the prime of my earning season. And so where am I putting my money? Into Bitcoin. The same way that my forefathers, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago would have been in the prime of their earning seasons and being saying, hey, look, we're going to buy gold because we're trying to beat inflation. Bitcoin gets an ETF. And I think that you're likely going to see a multi-year run that won't slow down for much. Now, I do think that you're going to see the four-year cycle continue for the altcoins because of the shadow of the four-year cycle of Bitcoin. I think in 2025, you'll see an all-time high on many of these altcoins and many of them will slump. They don't have the same kind of adoption, the same kind of the same kind of embedded, uh, embeddedness in the culture as Bitcoin is building right now. Bitcoin is turning into a legendary investment like the S&P 500, like gold, like silver, something that permeates the very fabric of human society, something that you cannot get away from. You can't get away from the stock market. You can't get away from the gold market. You can't get away from the real estate market. You can get away from the crypto market, but very soon and starting now, you cannot get away from Bitcoin. It is a fundamental part of human civilization the world over. And when you reach that status, which very, very, very few investments ever do, but when you reach that investment status, Status, you stop having a four-year cycle. Instead, you might have a drawdown every four years. Sure, Bitcoin might go to 200 or 250 after the ETF approval and then draw down 30, 40, 50, 60%. But I don't think you're ever going to see as deep of a drop as we've just seen, this 77% drop. Let's look at the history on Bitcoin here for a second. When Bitcoin has gone into bear markets, the bear markets have gotten increasingly smaller especially this most recent bear market. Our first bear market here was an 86% drop. Our second bear market was about the same size. Bitcoin dropped 84%, but it was slightly smaller. 
Our last bear market, the third major bear market of Bitcoin history, the second one that I've been here for, dropped 77%. You continue that trend and you're looking at maybe a 60% drop on Bitcoin. Well, if we go to 200K, <clears throat> which I think is very doable and honestly, maybe even a little bit conservative, if you drop 60% from there, that is still a $75,000 Bitcoin. And I think that's the kind of thing you're going to see. I think you may see more drops. I think you might see Bitcoin drop 50 to 60% during the next bear market. And it might even happen on the four-year cycle. I'm not saying this is all going to take place in this bull market. But Bitcoin is entering into a legendary investment status where pretty much nothing is going to send it down 77% like it has already gone down 77% during this bull market. I don't think that you're ever going to see a drop like that again. And I think that this uptrend right here very well may be our support. Moving on into 2025, we could very easily rally to 200 or 250 and maybe drop down to here to 60 to $80,000 as our bottom. Point being, you're probably never seeing these prices again after a couple of months of ETF being online because the amount of money that I think is going to flow into this space is going to be absolutely ridiculous. And you're going to see Bitcoin smoothen out to look a lot more like the stock market. The stock market goes through recessions and some of those are pretty deep. In 08, stocks lost 57% of their value. Most home values lost 50% of their value. We saw another 50% drawdown here in the 2000, in 2002, uh, to, uh, 2000 to 2003. You know, we saw a major correction during the pandemic, 35% drawdown. I'm not saying Bitcoin can't drop 30 to 50%, but 77%, I'm not sure you're ever going to see that again. I think that Bitcoin is going to start to smoothen out and start looking a lot more like the S&P 500 over the course of the next 10 to 15 years. And then after that, after that, you're going to see start to see some of the altcoins become institutionalized, become bedrock, foundational components of the world. Ethereum. One of the layer ones is going to take off and everything's going to be built on it. One of the layer ones. I don't know which one. Of course, that's why we diversify and we pick a bunch of them. But one of them is going to become the foundational bedrock layer of how pretty much everything is done technologically. When that happens, it's going to have its own ETF. Right now, Ethereum is the only one in the running, but it very well could have an approval in the next five years. When that happens, it becomes institutionalized and it might not be quite as stable as Bitcoin. But together, they will balance each other out. And then you can start building an index fund in crypto. And you're looking in the 2030s at an index fund being built of the top 20 to top 30 cryptocurrencies, because by that point in time, the winners have been chosen. You're seeing some come and go. But in general, you've got a lot of stability. You've got an, e an ecosystem where a cryptocurrency lasts for 20 years instead of two, which is what you see in the S&P 500. You're able to build an actively managed cryptocurrency index fund, ETF, whichever one you want, uh, very similar to the S&P 500, and people will be able to invest in that on brokerages. When that happens, crypto is going to be worth 20, 30, 40 trillion dollars. And we're talking 2023 dollars, not 2024 dollars. Right now, we're at 1.65. You think this is a lot. It's not. It's the ground floor. This entire market is going to 20 or 30x in the next 10 to 15 years. And so with all of that in mind, that leads me to my third and final point. How do we actually take advantage of this? Well, what I am doing in this bull market is I am holding on for dear life onto my Bitcoin. I'm never selling it. Just like most people, I'm hodling Bitcoin. I am not going to sell it at the top. I might take some profit. If I am pretty convinced that a massive bear market is coming, I might take some, like maybe 25%. But the vast majority of my Bitcoin I'm going to hold on to no matter what. The swing play I'm, I'm making are the altcoins. As soon as the stream's over, I'm going and doing my weekly dollar cost averaging, buying into the market. Those are the plays where I'm riding for this cycle because there is going to be a cycle and Bitcoin will participate in that cycle. It will go up with the alts. It will come down with the alts. I just don't think it's going to be anywhere near as drastic as it was in the last bull market. If the ETF is approved, I'm pretty sure it will be. The alts, there are a lot of different alts and I'm still learning a lot about them and I'm more than happy for you guys to teach me if you guys have any picks that you think I should see. I don't claim to be the altcoin expert or the altcoin king. My expertise is in technical analysis and by that by that expertise in technical analysis, I can learn about an altcoin very quickly because I can analyze this chart in like five minutes and know what's going on. And I can do fundamental analysis pretty quickly. That's not very complicated for me either. So I'm learning about the alts. I wouldn't claim to be a total expert in them, but I've made a lot of investments in them and I'm very excited about them. And I think that a lot of them are going to do very well. Just got a couple more across my desk that I'm interested in. Some of them are over on the Cardano ecosystem. Men swaps, one I'm looking at. Want to get a little bit of men swap. Interested in getting maybe a little bit of Apex. Interested in that. But my point is, I believe many of these cryptocurrencies between number three, which is Tether, obviously, so not Tether, but Binance and down, uh, down to about rank 40. Many of these were here in the last bull market. I think they're going to 5 to 10x in the coming bull market. And then after the rank 40s, after the rank 35 to 40, you're getting down into small caps. These are cryptocurrencies that probably weren't here in the 
last bull market. If they were and they're down at rank number 90, then they're probably dead and you probably don't want to buy them. EOS, NEO, Dash, those kind of projects come to mind. Bitcoin SV, ugh, those projects come to mind. Now, there are some projects down here that are very, 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 very good. VeChain, I'm loving VeChain. Have some VeChain. Caspa, going to be getting into some Caspa. Arbitrum. I am dying to get into this project, and I wish I had done it a few days. I wish I had done it a few weeks ago, but it's okay. Still okay. There's so much being built here. There's so much being built here in this ecosystem. Let me just show you really quickly over on DeFi Llama. If you guys are familiar with DeFi Llama, great, great, great place to bookmark. Arbitrum, not Arbitrium, apologies, but Arbitrum has a huge amount of development going on right now some very 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 large projects over here for example gmx ave uniswap come on guys massive projects tvl's through the roof it's got cardano absolutely whooped cardano's looking at 369 million right now arbitrum is a much newer project sitting at 250 billion sorry 2.5 billion that's incredible a lot of development going on over there uniswap like i said is on uh, Uniswap is on Ethereum and Uniswap is on Arbitrum. That ought to tell you something right there. So I'm looking to getting I'm looking to get into um, Arbitrum. Um, many other projects over here that I think will do very well. I think Arbitrum could very easily go through a massive rally. My one concern about it is the fully diluted market capitalization is already 18.9 billion. We've got only about 12 or 13 percent of the total market capitalization already circulating. That is absolutely a concern of mine. So I do want to get into it, but I am concerned about a couple of those factors. All right. Now, how are we going to play this? <clears throat> I'm trying to load up as much as I can because I already have Bitcoin and Ethereum. Got a bunch of those. I'm going to be probably getting some more, but I want to stack up on these altcoins that I think are going to 5 to 10x, especially some of these altcoins that I really, really, really believe in that are, I think could more than 10x. Caspa is one of them. I think Caspa, because it's already got most of its circulating supply out there, strong project. Every time I talk about it, you guys go absolutely crazy for it, which shows me that the community is in really good shape. This project, I think, could easily go to 2 or $3. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. I could be, I could see this worth twenty or thirty trillion. I could see this project in the top ten if it takes off and really get and it really gets steam. Top ten status in this bull market will be twenty to thirty, maybe even fifty trillion dollars. So pay attention to that. Several other projects I want to look into. I want to look into some more gaming coins, more AI coins. Still learning about all that. Uh, graph. I have some graph. Looking into getting into more of that. Algo. I think is doing well. Um, so yeah, you guys can tell me if there are any ones that you are excited about. Uh, Pancake Swap, kind of interested in that. Pancake Swap did really well, really, really, really well last bull market. This is kind of one of those blue chip coins, but it's way outside of the top ten. I don't think it's dead though. Um, you know, we can go over to Dexes and look at it in a minute. But the point is, I think that right now we're moving into this idea of Bitcoin. Eh, maybe don't swing at this route, this market. Instead, maybe treat Bitcoin more like how you would invest in. The S&P 500, you buy it and you hold it till retirement or you buy it and you hold it to give it to your grandkids or whatever it is. Instead, I'm looking into swinging many of the altcoins because I think Bitcoin is becoming such a powerful play that I'm not just looking for a bull market play. I'm looking for a multi-generational play here. I'm looking to hold on to something that I could give to my kids or my grandkids. You know, I'm looking onto something that I could hold till the end of the century and I'm not even going to be here at the end of the century more than likely. Hopefully, I'll be with my Lord, my father in heaven by then. But whoever's left behind, they can have the Bitcoin. And I think that it's going to do very, very well. So my play, trading these altcoins, trying to get a 5 to 10x return on many of them. Very excited about the success of the channel, by the way, guys. Right now, we are averaging about 200 subscribers a day. We're also averaging between 25 and 30,000 views a day. And we're also averaging between uh, about... 2,700 to 4,000 watch hours a day. Yesterday's video absolutely killed it. You guys loved it. If you guys have not watched the Climate of Crypto videos lately, I really hope you do because I love the little skits over there. I always, I just always make myself die laughing. And it's not because I think I'm that funny. It's mainly because I'm like, man, this is so stupid. Nobody's going to like this. And then I, and then the video is 20,000 views and you guys are commenting on it. And you guys think it's funny. I'm like, okay, cool. So if you haven't watched this video, uh, the most recent video on the channel, go check it out. Let's read some chat. <clears throat> Echo Denise said dirty dancing. Was that too easy of a guess? That might have been too easy of a that might have been too easy of a um of a hint. Seems seems insane to want to hold for your potential kids or grandkids, lol. I guess I'm just not a father figure guy though. Yeah, I mean the I've got it right here. Where is it? I remember it's at the bottom of the page. Um 
Ah, I found it. It was one page over. Look, it was just one page over from where I was yesterday. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. I would love to leave something to my children and my children's children. Mainly, I'd love to leave them wisdom and um, a testimony, but I'm not against leaving them money as well, so long as I believe that they're going to be good stewards of it. All right. Learn your kids how to fish. Don't just give them your fish. I agree. I'm not interested in giving my kids a bunch of money unless I know what they're actually going to do with it. Um, I'm not, I've never been one to say, ah, let's go make $50 million and just give it all to the kids. I would like to give my kids something, um, but I've got a lot of thinking and many years to figure it out before I really think about how we're going to do that. I want to build what we're doing here into a ministry where we can help tens or hundreds of millions of people, maybe even over a billion people, learn more about finances. And uh, that's really what I'm excited about. I do want to leave them things, but there's a lot of things I'm going to leave them also. Any thoughts on quant? Raphael Anwar said, said answer my question, answer my question. <laughs> Sorry there, my friend. I will look into quant. Not the most familiar with it yet. People keep hounding me about it. I do need to. It's kind of on my list. I got like a mental list in my head. I ought to write it down of different coins I want to look into and do more research on. Uh, but Quant is one of them. I'll look really quickly here at the chart. It is downward facing Doge style. But during the last bull market, went all the way up to $400. It's at 120 right now. Yeah, I'll have to look more into it. It's on Coinbase. It's on Binance. Max supply is already... Okay. Okay, total supplies. Okay, so 81% of the total supply is already circulating. That's good. Yeah, I'll look more into it. I'll look more into it. It's in a good range. I like looking at things down there in the like 50 to 60 range. I like that. All right, let's read some more chat. Give your kids wallets without the keys and let them get their degree in crypto. <laughs> yep. Why bother giving it to kids? You just make them lazy. Lol. Yeah, believe me, I went through a lot. I went through a lot on the journey to where I am right now. And I know I'll go through a lot more on the journey to where we will be tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, my, my, main, my main goal with my children is to teach them the things that I've learned. I'm far more interested in teaching them than giving money to them. But they probably will be doing that as well. You make me feel so bullish for the future. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to be a permable. Look, guys, there are bearish factors out there. Um, Bubble Disco said, Jeb, buying any dot? I am. It's beautiful there. Was just there past fall. Art or destroy. Silver's a letdown, agreed. <laughs> what about silver? Worthless. You guys don't like silver. OG gold holders hate us, bro. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Man, uh, Manuel Garcia said, good morning, everyone. Let's go. Good morning. Goal is at 488 ETF time. Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Brock Lagunas donated $5, said, trying to buy Caspa. I'm in Texas and can't use KuCoin or Binance. Are there any other ways to convert to it? That's what I'm trying to figure out right now, to be honest with you. I'm hoping it get list, gets listed somewhere, but I want to buy it before it gets listed. That's one of the things I like about Caspa, is it's got a crazy good project, which means it probably will one day be on um, it probably will one day be on Coinbase, which could send it into a massive rally, but it's not there right now. So uh, I would try KuCoin or Gate. Uh, Bing X, we've worked with them and BitGet and Mexi. I've worked with all, literally all four of these, all um Rank three, four, five, and six. I've worked with all four of those exchanges before: Bybit, Mexi, Bitgate, and uh, Bitget, and BingX. So any one of those, I would imagine, would be a very good place to get it. I'm probably going to be going and getting some as well. Need to for sure. <clears throat> Mexi with VPN, you said. With a VPN, that reminds me, guys. If you have not already, make sure to sign up for NordVPN. You can find the link for NordVPN right. There. Boom. Look at that. Hang on. Let's just, I'll do the green light thing I do with my son. Watch this. And green. Ha. Change the red light. If you guys have kids and you don't do that, you're missing out. You got to watch the other light because you can see it to the side and you see it changing yellow and you know you got three seconds. One, two, three. Green. Boom. Kids love that. 
the other one, the other trick. I learned this with my nephew, my cousin. I'm sorry. He's like three. His name is Trip. Is Trip. Long time ago. You got a two year old or a three year old. Walk up to the grocery store and pretend you have the force and go whoosh. Open the doors. Come on. Come on. That's fun. That's fun right there. That's what life's all about. Anyway, if you have not already signed up for NordVPN, you are missing out. I'm going to tell you exactly why. There's a massive bull market coming. And if you follow what we talk about here, you're going to make a lot of money. So long as you do it, uh, with, you know, and you're wise with finance and we make some good investments, we can make a lot of money. The last thing you want is for that money to get stolen by a hacker. So make sure that you sign up for NordVPN with the link in the description box down below and get a massive, uh, uh, get a huge amount of protection for the next two years by getting the two-year plan and sign up right now and do it all risk-free with a 30-day money-back refund guarantee. Again, if you have not already gotten NordVPN, I think you're missing out because it is going to help protect you while you're browsing the internet. So sign up for NordVPN with the link down below. Boom. What's the best cold wallet out there? Would love your opinion. I still work with Ledger. A lot of people don't like Ledger. I almost feel like you got to be careful saying that. I like Tangem. It's not exactly a cold wallet. I've got my Tangem wallet. Boom, right there. I have a review on the channel for that. Uh, let's see. Raf Raful Raphael Anwar. I'm sorry. I always mispronounce your name. Said, uh, Jeff, answer my Bitcoin question. What's the Bitcoin question? All I see... <laughs> answer my question about Bitcoin. Answer my question about Bitcoin. Where is it? Trying to find it. I'm trying to find your question. I can only see I only see all these chats where you're saying, please answer my question. I don't actually see the question. I see Yo Jeb, look at Quant. <laughs> I don't see the question. Cast between to 30x? Yeah, I think it could. I think it could for sure. I don't see your question about Bitcoin. Jeb, modern day Dave Ramsey. I do intend to emulate a good bit about Dave Ramsey, but not everything. I obviously disagree with him on some things. I've, obviously, I think cryptocurrency is a great investment. Um, but Dave Ramsey's got a lot of things right, even if he's got crypto wrong. Nobody's got everything right. Captain Swanky Pants says, Jeb has classes to sign up for. I do. You ought to check them out. Links in the description box down below. Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy down there. Family kills me. 2 million fiat in bank. 200k in physical gold. Bitcoin zero. Ugh. Ouch. That's rough. That's really sad. <laughs> pew pew boom too said, oh dang, that's my bad guy. I shouldn't have said that. Hey, I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> we're going to read chat here for a little bit and then we're going to wrap it out. Love interacting with you guys. His, his kids will grow up rich and humble, so it's all about how well the parent teaches. Our kids are... My oldest Malachi, he is he is just a he's an absolute just he's very kind. If you hurt yourself, he's like, Oh, are you okay? Do you need a hug? He's so he's so sweet. He's such a sweet boy. And a lot can change in the fifteen years between now and and him um you know becoming an adult, but I think he's gonna be a great kid. He already is. Let's see. Middle class, Jeb, Bitcoin, next bear market. I what's the question? I don't know what the question is. Pierre, you think I think. Hey, greetings from the Netherlands. Love your shows. Do I think the middle class will be able to buy Bitcoin? Is that the question? You think middle class get another <laughs> chance of <laughs> owning <laughs> a full Bitcoin? Owning Bitcoin? I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. Um, I mean, yeah, ultimately anybody, anybody, if they put their mind to it, can make enough money to own a Bitcoin right now. I think the Bitcoin will be, I think the Bitcoin will struggle, um, <clears throat> to, uh, excuse me, not struggle, but I think that you will struggle to find Bitcoin under a hundred thousand dollars within just the next couple of years. I will say that. So whether or not the middle class can afford that or not, it's kind of up to, um, it's kind of up to interpretation, but yeah, I think it's going to get difficult. I think it's going to get real difficult for the middle class to buy Bitcoin, even during the bear market. I will say that. Ask your question properly. He's doing it that way because YouTube keeps blocking out his question. I don't know why it's doing that to him. Tell me you're a boomer without telling me you're a boomer. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not a boomer, but I imagine if I were a boomer, I could tell you I was a boomer without telling you you're a boomer by saying... I have a room full of collectible dolls. 
I'm sorry. I just threw shade at half of you guys because I know a lot of you guys are over the age of 50. I just had to. Had to do it. Had to do it. You know, it's it's unfair for us because we have the advantage of being able to store memories and pictures. But um, if I was going to tell you I was a boomer without telling me you're a boomer, I'd say uh, <laughs> look at my room full of collectible dolls. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Coaching session question. Uh, I do enjoy doing coaching sessions. I just did one yesterday. I've done two this week, actually. I think we're going to have to wrap it out, guys. I do apologize. I haven't been able to get to every question. My thought on Aurora, I haven't looked into it yet, so I will pay attention. I will, I will try and look into that as well. My reference to Dave Ramsey was teaching people about finance and financial, finance and financial freedom. Dave Ramsey has a lot to learn on crypto. I will say that. But I think he's got a lot of things right. And he's got a whole lot of things right. And I think generally speaking, you might not, you might, the thing about watching Dave Ramsey is that he might not, he might not, uh, by following him, you might not make as much money as you could, but you're definitely going to stop hemorrhaging money. Cardano to $100, what's your thought? <sighs> Maybe in 15, 20 years. $100 is a very high number. Very, very, very high number. Testing to see if I'm blocked too. Can anyone see this chat? Uh, apparently I can because I'm reading it. <laughs> Longer it takes, more we accumulate. Absolutely. All right. I will try and look into many of these coins, guys. I do apologize. I just don't know about every single one of them. I am learning about a lot of different coins right now. i got a lot of research to do. Um, I was mainly focused on Bitcoin and ETH last bull market, and I want to focus on a lot more altcoins this bull market. What, what about possible the electric grid fails in crypto versus hard assets? If the electric grid fails, you are worried about investing in toilet paper and canned goods, not in any kind of asset. So Mario's in chat said, testing to see if I'm blocked. Anyone see this chat? Yes, I can see your chat. Hey, Jeb. Hard to jump on your live stream now since I'm on the West Coast now. Oh, well, hi there. I'd like if you made a video about dApps and projects on Cardano. That would be nice. I would like that. Is MexC safe? I believe so. Dave and a retirement investor. We are advised not to even talk about crypto. It's not considered a retirement investment for older people. Yeah, that's going to change in the next 10 to 15 years. Dave is absolutely somebody who's trying to get the average American who doesn't want to think about it too much to retirement. And he's got a lot of things right, but you're going to miss out on a lot of very valuable investment opportunities as well. Joe Kedgley Aon says, testing to see if I'm blocked. Nope, I can see you. Diversify now, people. Yep. Shadrach Frost said, have to drop for a meeting. Thanks, Jebs. Folks, have a great weekend and be kind to each other. Be blessed. Thank you so much. God bless you as well, my friend. All right, guys, we are going to wrap it out. I should probably go rest. Oh, I just yanked my headphones out. Nice. I should probably go rest because... Chick, chick, chick. Oh, wow. Great. My one ear is hearing my feedback. That's all right. We'll just... Oh, there we go. Fixed it. Uh, I am going to head out and rest and look forward to the weekend. But video coming out here in just a minute. I'm about to go shoot it. And... We are also having a video coming out right now, uh, not right now, but uh, right this weekend on Sunday at 2. My old school Sunday sermon style videos where I teach on different things that I've learned are coming out. I've learned a lot since I stopped doing those. I'm a much wiser individual than I was two years ago when I stopped doing those. So really excited about that video. That video is already shot up, waiting to go out. It is titled Lessons That Have Saved Me Millions of Dollars in Cryptocurrency. And that video will be coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. I am going to wrap it out. But before I go, guys, make sure to sign up for NordVPN. Links down there. Make sure to sign up for Apex and Bybit if you're interested in either one of those exchanges. The links are down there. Also, make sure to check out the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy and Financial Coaching. Those links are down there as well. And make sure to sign up for Lux Algo because pretty soon, only exclusively available to people that sign up for the Crypto Jeb, uh, that sign up with our link, the Crypto Jeb link for Lux Algo, you will be getting access to the Crypto Jeb Lux Algo Technical Indicator. I have a call about that at two today with the founder of Lux Algo. Cannot wait to get that rolling. Before I go though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.